Let's uh, get started. So hello, my name is uh, Damon Edwards and uh, just introducing today's office hours topic, which I know got a lot of interest, which is uh, the new Rundeck uh, Kubernetes integration, uh, talking about both how to use Rundeck to manage uh, things in Kubernetes, as well as using Kubernetes to uh, manage and scale your, uh, your Rundeck deployments. We're looking at it from, from both directions. Um, and I want to introduce Alex Honor, who's our uh, CTO and uh, co-founder, and uh, he's going to give you some, uh, some, uh, some commentary on what we're doing. Um, and then the actual demo will be uh, shown by uh, our integration engineer, Luis uh, Toledo, who is the one who uh, would uh, put together the initial Kubernetes plugins and uh, can uh, go into depth on, on those. So, so Alex, uh, why don't you uh, take it away? All right, yeah, thanks, Damon. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, our goals for today's office hours. Uh, firstly, we wanted to learn from you all. Um, how are you planning on providing self-service to Kubernetes? Um, we've heard some people from the community say that they, they need to allow some of their um, developers or other operations uh, team members be able to spin up uh, provision uh, applications um, maybe in different environments and wondering how to make that easy so you know run deck is a, is a good tool for that and then also kind of getting into the nitty-gritty if you're already um, doing this kind of work what uh, would you like to see streamlined and how would you like to see things automated end-to-end -end? so you'll see we have a pretty good first pass at our integration and uh, but you know um, some of the things that we are focusing on are higher level uh, automation so that uh, some of the, the things that are easy either not easy to do or just too many steps for you to have to go through can be uh, can tied together as one thing um, the other thing is uh, you know we're starting to use kubernetes ourselves to uh, spin up environments and, and uh, see how we can scale the Rundeck Pro Cluster. And we have customers that are also interested in, in hosting Rundeck Pro Cluster in Kubernetes. So you'll see an example of that as well. Um, there's just a few requirements right now. Firstly, of course, is this plugin that you'll see demonstrated. There's a, a GitHub URL there under Rundeck Plugins Kubernetes. There's a number of providers there. We'll show you that at the end, um, get into the project a little bit. This plugin is compatible with the current uh, open source or pro, um, 2.10.6 is the current version. And it also uses the Python Kubernetes SDK. So the plugin itself is actually written in Python, but there's a, a small pull request we have pending that adds some authentication support we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, that's necessary, but once that's uh, merged in, then it will just be the standard Python Kubernetes SDK. And then finally, uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, where it's running, uh, we're using Tectonic on Amazon, just so you know what the Kubernetes environment looks like. All right, so here's basically what you'll see today. We'll uh, describe all of the different providers in the plugin. Um, talk about how you can see uh, containers that come up through um, the provisioning process as Rundeck nodes. We're going to use Nginx as our example for deploy and undeploy. That will give you a sense for what those steps look like in a job to bring up something like uh, an application like Nginx. And then um, how to create and run Kubernetes jobs it's the, themselves. Uh, that was one of the first uh, community contributions that we saw, uh, which was a way of uh, invoking a Kubernetes job from a Rundeck job. Um, something a little different is how can you execute ad hoc commands in a Kubernetes container? Um, we find that useful, especially when we're kind of in a development test environment and we bring up the, the application and we need to kind of look inside it, you know, kind of from a Unix standpoint. Um, so ad hoc commands is something that's easy to do in Rundeck, and, and you'll see how that works in this environment. And then finally, uh, you know, how does it look like to provision a pro cluster in Kubernetes, and how can we scale it up? So that's basically what you'll see, and from there I'll hand it over to Luis. And uh, 
Hey, uh, just one second, Luis. Before you, before you get started, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, this is meant to be an interactive session, so um, I think we promoted anybody who's joined through the Zoom app. We promoted you to be a panelist, so you can jump in and ask questions, or if you feel a little shy, you can go ahead and put it in the uh, in the chat. Um, but uh, feel free to uh, you know to uh, to ask questions as we go. We'd we'd love to hear feedback or any relevant experience people have to uh, have to share. And then if you're not talking, if you can keep your microphone on mute. Uh, to keep the background noise uh, down. Uh, okay, take it away, Luis. Okay, hello everyone. And I will show here the, this is all the workflow step that we created on to, to perform some, um, some functionality like, uh, for example, create a development, delete an existing development and update um, a development and uh, for example, check the status of our development and and I step that way for the development to be ready. So this the status and wait for are um, tied with the the status of the pods that are that are part of the development. So if the all the pods are on a on a development is ready, the, this will return a, a a successful execution. And the wait for is similar, but it's, it's it's a loop that wait for the successful just for um, uh, status. So then we have uh, another uh, workflow step to create a service and create, update, and delete a service. Um, for jobs to create a job, delete a job, and rerun. So we will see this later that uh, this is not directly allowed on, on Kubernetes. So what we do is, is check take the, the job definition that was already created in Kubernetes and then delete it and create it again. So that make the functionality like rerun a, a job. So, well then, and we have some generic um, steps in order to, for example, create another, another kind of resource like uh, ingress or volumes, etc. We will check, we have a, we started with a list of resources may, maybe that can can increase. Um, of course, uh, again, um, a way to delete generic resource with this plugin. Um, I forgot to mention that this generic step, it takes the YAML string to that normally is used on Kubernetes to, to create the, those resources. Um, then we have, um, finally, I, I added this at the end that the, we can get the logs from the from a pod that is already created. Then um, we have another plugin that is called a resource model, which will get the Kubernetes pods as a random node. So we'll check that the detail later. And finally, we have a an executor that allows you to run uh, a doc command to uh, okay and um, okay will I will move to the note page Alex do you have something else to to add no that that was a good okay. overview okay okay so I will start with the note page where you can see I have some notes here that are bots on, on Kubernetes. So the bring brings a build like a array with some um, key values that I get from the, the, the bot definition. Um, this allows to, 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 uh, to customize the, the way that you get the notes in here. And, in, in Randex. For example, I, I, I will show the, um, how the model source is configured. For example, you can add uh, the full attribute that will, will go directly to the node uh, definition. And you can use a custom mapping that, for example, put some particular uh, attribute of Randex without the full value that the, the array that I showed you before. So um, that could be useful for in the case that you want to add custom tags. For example, 
here I I I add a task from the status of the pods or from the levels. So I will show why I did that later. And finally, this uh, field selector is, is come directly from the API, Kubernetes API. So in this case, I just, I just want, I filter the list of pods using uh, the full night space. So there is extra information you can get here for, you, for the how to filter uh, the running pods. And um, finally, you, you can just put that you want to see the, the, the running pods. About authentication, and uh, as uh, Alex mentioned, uh, I started to, to working with, I, I started a, a, with a cluster environment on Kubernetes using Tectonic. So I realized the first time that I tried it that there is no, uh, the Kubernetes uh, Python library doesn't have support to OEDC authentication that use Tectonic. So we work it and added that support and for, we send the pull request to, to the Kubernetes Python repo. So we are waiting for that. And the authentication is, you can use just authenticate it using the Kubernetes config file that normally a user use for, for the Kubernetes control commands. And if you leave this in blank, this will, uh, will take directly the, the config file from the, so the home user path. Okay. So let's move to the check ad, um, an example of the a demo for deploying an nginx application. So I have here a, a job that has four step. One um, started to creating a, a development, then create a service, an ingress, and wait wait for the uh, for the application be ready. So let's check this. In detail. So the create create development uh, workflow step uh, has uh, you need to pass information like the of course the uh, deployment name, the name space where you will create this deployment, so levels. Um, here you can see the container information, the name of the container, the image that you will use. In this case I I build a, an nginx image I put it in Amazon for this example, um, which ports you will expose and um, some variables that I'm passing here to the container. I separate the in, in two uh, input options, the way to set environment for with a um, static value or passing the, the value from the, for the uh, Kubernetes secrets. So we will see another example at the end. Then the liveness and readiness proof that I, for simplicity, I just put the, the array of the liveness and readiness format. So you can just add the, check the, uh, the format in the, in the documentation here. And the, this is important for the wait for step. So um, if you add this readiness proof, the, the, the post status will be ready when this is, uh, it's, this happens. So this help, this is help check is happens. So is important for the wait for a step. And then we have the number of replicas that you will, will create for this deployment. And um, some other command uh, input option that I'm not using in this case, like uh, uh, running a container, a command to the, on the container or passing arguments. So in this guy, put it here a request for the memory and CPU. And um, volume mounts and volumes that you want to use. Well, I have another example that use those. Well, then I create a service that um, also I need to pass the name, the, the full name space, some labels and annotations. Um, here I'm using a lot, a lot of balancer on Amazon. So I tell in Amazon that I want to use the HTTP protocol. And then the selector which tie the, join the, this uh, service with the development, the ports for the service. I'm using a load balancer type. I um, have another option like section affinity, external traffic, um, external name, and load policy. Okay. Then I'm using a generic step to create an ingress. 
So I just, I have some option here, development, service, ingress, job, storage class, persistent volume, persistent volume, cram and secrets. So you, you need to select the type and pass in the, the YAML string. So in this case, I will use this, um, my endpoint address, and I will deploy this um, service on our ingress in, the, in this endpoint. So I should be able to, to, to access to my engineers to this address. So uh, finally, I have here the, my wait for a step that uh, just passing the name and I have some uh, input like number of retry that I want to, to use. This will be the number of loops that uh, waiting for the deployment to be ready. And, and it's slip between, between this, those retries. So let's try, let's try it. I hope that it works. Okay, while this is creating, uh, I will check the, the node page again. So here you can see that the pods are creating and I have this, uh, no very original uh, icons that show me that the, the container is not ready yet because it's, they are deployment, deploying, sorry. So for a while, the, the, the pods are ready. So if I go here and I have filter here, sorry. One thing that Luis is showing there that some of you may not uh, be aware you can do is add icons to nodes through uh, special attributes. Right. Um, by the way, I, I mentioned that I have a custom um, tag. So I, what I want to, to do, for example, is because I filter for, for an attack that it's a level of my, my deployment, so here I'm filtered by a, a development list. So that's why I, I want to reach there. That's important as, a, as kind of a normal practice in, in Rundeck, which is when you're spinning up new nodes to tag them uh, in the provisioning process so you, you'll have some address or, or easy way to reference those new ones. Right. Okay, so I will move to I don't know if anyone has any questions so far, so otherwise I will. Yeah, any, any questions or uh, maybe any comments? Uh, is it, you may try to do this on, on their own. Uh, you know, feel free to speak up. Uh, but can you hear me? Oh, test, test? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, besides the um, Rundeck UI for um, deployments, is there a way to also um, load files from source control or some other place so you can edit it in the nice Rundeck UI and also manage uh, the YAML on disk somewhere? You mean to, for example, get a, has a, um, oh, wait a second. Uh, I think here, here. Has a YAML file like this one yeah. and just added the. Oh, okay, file. okay. So you have all the YAML. Okay. Yeah. Well, it could be, uh, well, it could be you also, we can add the, the option to has the path of the, uh, the file here. Or also, we, I don't know if it's possible to have the input option, uh, input option file and pass it th that file to the plugin. I'm not sure if that's possible. That that could be some ideas. Yeah. Okay. Or just the path if you know, I don't know if if that is okay for you. And we do have many customers who manage their job definitions via Git. And so they're defined as uh, XML or YAML in Git. And then uh, this YAML, for example, would be part of that definition for your job. All right. Right, but then if, for example, um, we have we have now some plugins that can, for example, get the the 
it could be a two-step uh, uh, job that get first uh, step that get the 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 file from from the repo and then reference that re file here. That could be also a workaround instead of directly put the, 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 the repo address. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will so run that round. We are uh, using Helm to um, manage all of our deployments and um, Jenkins, like a Jenkins pipeline to run the Helm. Um, is there anything like that this sort of would afford us over that or where you could see like use cases that where you know you wouldn't necessarily go through a pipeline or use a helm deployment or is there any um, thought into getting some sort of helm integration um, into the Rundeck uh, Kubernetes plugin? Yeah, I think that's a good uh, next step is to see the helm integration. Yeah, I think so. As far as um, using Rundeck rather than Jenkins for the pipeline, I think it just depends on the process that this is fitting into. So, um, yeah, if you're building out test environments automatically, it might, might make sense to, to leave it there. But um, a lot of the users that we talk to are more on kind of the operational side, so they're outside of the pipeline process and they, they just still need that ability to do things like this on demand. Well, okay, so, uh, well, I next I will show how to create a job. So we have this random job that create a Kubernetes job. So uh, this uh, you need to add uh, some name and space uh, similar to other uh, cases, some levels, and um, retry policies, and complete relation parallels, etc. Uh, for the well, here uh, you need to add also the container information. In this case, I'm using a, a CentOS, a simply CentOS image. I'm telling that I should be pool always. I'm passing some environment variables, and I'm running this simple command as sleep. So this this job will will live for 70 seconds. So, and we have other options like container arguments, um, resource requests, persistent volume. So let's check how this works. So the, the job was created and I want to check here. This job should create a, a pod, so the, I, I can see this pod here. And um, well, I just have seven seconds to, to do this. I wanted to, for example, run a, check what the pod is running. This uh, use case is something that we're all really interested to hear your thoughts about, which is um, running ad hoc commands inside the container. Like I said, that we found it useful, you know, when maybe things aren't looking right or we want to just kind of confirm the internal process state um, or network access or whatnot. Um, but maybe it's a little different, but uh, yeah, it, we find it a little bit useful. All right, I think I took too much time. Oh, it's in progress. Took us some time to get. Oh. oh, something happened here. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure why it could didn't bring it. Let me take a look. Okay. 
Sorry, didn't work. I'm not sure. Uh, let's try again. So I mentioned before that we have the option to rerun the this job. Uh, probably with this status won't work. And that's a case where uh, that's a little bit inconvenient just using um, the dashboard or cube control to rerun it. You basically have to delete the job, create the job, and run the job again. So it's doing that work for you as one step. Yes. Yes, I will try to create again because I probably this will fail if I try to rerun it because it didn't finish. So let's check what happened. Well, as I said, uh, Alex, let's try to first delete the, to get, it, it get the, um, the job uh, information that already is already created, deleted and created again. So probably the, we'll have the job, the job will start again. Yes, I have problem with the image, I think. Yes. Uh, one thing I forgot to say is uh, in that case where Luis was showing you running an ad hoc command, that does depend on what the image supports. So not all images have PS in it or whatever, but. Um, right. Okay, so let's move to the. Um, I will show you how to. For example, run ad hoc commands to to the bots. So here, for example, here I have my my previous uh, nginx deployment that I we built. So, for example, I will filter by um, nginx demo. So I will tell Randek to check what those images are running. So as you can see, this is running the Nginx. Uh, for example, I will print the, the index that we should see in the in the web page. And this is using the the Kubernetes API to do the exec, in case somebody's wondering. Right. So here's I, I forgot to to show that the I, we have the nginx application working. Uh, we can see that we have the we are we check this in the directly on the bots. Okay, and so uh, something else to to add um, to this. Point, Alex. Um, no. I okay. So okay. we'll we'll move to the final. Uh, sorry. I wonder if there's any any questions on that. I mean, I know that I was brought up earlier about you know they have different methods already for deploying into um, you know Kubernetes. I wonder if for more of this you know kind of exploratory or troubleshooting, um, if this matches to what you know people are, are looking for or what they already do today or they have you know alternate paths to do this. Um, you know, um, welcome. Yeah, I think I think it'll be really useful um, for our team for situations where um, you know we do need to run ad hoc commands inside pods. Um, and there is a number of commands you have to run just to find the information you need in order to get to the pod to run the command. And um, since we're slowly onboarding different teams here, I, th I think it's a useful feature for sure. Okay, cool. And also, you know, remember all this respects run next ACLs, right? So you can decide, you know, who has access to run the ad hoc commands and, and what project and, you know, things like that. Yeah, I think that's one of the things too, is, is having that um, audit log and LDAP login and everything that we have with Rundeck um, that I haven't found a good solution for 
you know, with, with Helm and everything yet. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool feature. Yeah, I mean, that's the way if you look at Rundeck, we want to be the thing in front of the, those APIs, right? We don't want to replace those, those APIs or other tools. So, you know, Rundeck wants to make them better. So uh, any suggestions on integrations, you know, we're all ears and make sure to send them our way. Okay, let me start about that. Go ahead. Yes, so the final thing that I want to show is that we already have a, a Rundeck cluster here de developing, developing on, on Kubernetes. So this was my first user case. So I started the plugin with this user case. In fact. So for example, here, are, this is my cluster. Um, I want to show you that we have this tree and the pods are my three cluster members. So and I went to and uh, what I want, to, I, I will check first how I deploy it, this one. So this is uh, a four step job that create the development, create a service for that development. And I create, I run a, a job which basically register the, um, the load balancer address on the host zone of Amazon. So to access to, to get this endpoint working. And finally, I wait for the to this the deployment be ready. So uh, the difference with the nginx that this this is more important here because it took me like two or three minutes to to get the the run the node and now the container app. So and well, we'll check a little the detail. So uh, it's basically the same that I explained before. The, I'm using a around the uh, image that we built and I put it in on Amazon. Um, we have some environment variables like I'm passing the database con uh, connection to the to the to Randek. Um, well this MySQL is also deployed on of course on Kubernetes. Um, passing things like the I'm using a, 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 a three log storage. storage. Um, and here I pass in the, the, the access key and secret key for the log store using uh, some secrets that has the, you need to use the format that the name of the secret and the, the variable. With. Could, then, could I interject a question here? Sorry, yes, yes. Um, thanks, in the, in the environment variables section, I noticed you've got database password just exposed and you had mentioned, uh, I believe Alex had mentioned that some customers use uh, get to essentially define all of their job definitions and, and maintain all of their job definitions. So what that says to me is that password is now exposed in source control. Um, is there a way to interpolate um, environment variables um, in in this particular case, in the case of the environment variables? Because yes. well, like we use HashiCorp Vault um, instead of the Kubernetes secret manager where, uh, where, where we work. Uh, so, right. just, like, that yes. environment variable can get populated like on the machine as an environment variable. Um, so would there be like some sort of like a, you know, dollar sign vault right. token syntax or dollar sign database password? Like, is that so, interpolation available? Yeah, to answer your question, uh, Rundex supports a secure storage um, for credentials and secrets. They're just listed here in the environment variables uh, for convenience. Um, the uh, secret store, uh, there's a plugin for Vault, so it can talk to Vault directly and get them directly from Vault. Uh, and then uh, it can also store them encrypted in your uh, storage, or there are other plugins as well for it, for where those uh, pieces come from. But you would configure your secrets there, in your case in Vault, and then refer to them uh, via the uh, uh, secret store sure. in Rundeck. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that I, I haven't tested that, but you can, for example, as, um, you can add um, an input option with the with the. You can store your password on the on the Rundeck storage uh, keys and create an option that reference that key and then use something like this. I, I haven't tried, but this is my day. Pass, um, database password. 
that could be a, a good option. So I, I haven't tried that, but I would like that this works. Oh, well, that's just another case. So would, would that, that would only get interpolated at runtime then, like it wouldn't actually, that exactly. wouldn't store my password and source control at all, right? Exactly, yes. Or in the blog. Luis, you could also move the database password into the environment variables from secret. Oh, yes, yes. here, yes, yes, that's, but they mentioned that they don't use the, this oh, okay. One. Yeah, but at least in that case, that'd be another approach. Yes, yes, yes. of course, they, I'm, I'm doing that here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they mentioned that they mentioned that they, they are not using this one. Right, right. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your, uh, thanks for answering my question. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, well, we have a randomness proof and liveness proof define it in the port of the random port. Uh, well, I, I started three replicas that you, you saw before. Um, that's it. And for the service, I think there is nothing more that I explained before now. Uh, I have this um, this job that uh, public uh, my took my service name address the for Amazon and, and public on the host zone so in order that I can access to to the to the cluster the, to the random cluster. So the test that I want to show you is to I want to increase the my random members doing an update of the deployment. So the update step that I didn't show you before is, is basically the same, has the same uh, structure that they create. But the difference is that you don't have some, um, you don't have, not all the, 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 the attributes are obligatory. So for example, in this case, I'm passing dynamically just the number of replicas that I want to, to modify on the, on the deployment. And I add a step to wait for the deployment to be ready. So let's check what happened. I will add one more uh, 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 cluster member. So the wait for told me that I have four replicas and one of them are not ready yet. So I can go to the to the notes page. And we filter for run the tags, and you can see here that I make my my pod is in the creating process. So. So this pod is, is starting. So this took like a couple of minutes, three minutes. So, so I think so I have another step that check the logs from the, from the from a container. Oh sorry. I need to I want to select just the, the node that I I created, which is this country. This one. So they will show me what is happening in the in the the um, the run the in the side of the container is starting. And um, well, also we have another, for example, I, I, um, I have it here. I install it in, in, the, in the image, the, by default, the, the run the client. So I will run a, on, on the pods, the system info command to check what is happening inside the, the containers. Thank you. 
And that's just another example of us using the ad hoc command to poke around inside the running container to, to confirm what we hope to see or maybe find out something that's not working right. Right. So in my, the, the, the pod data is creating is not ready yet. That's why the RD command didn't return the, the system info. So, um, any question? Because <laughs> this will, will take some, some time. Yeah, this is a good time to just pause and ask for questions generally. Um, we've gotten through the, the main parts of, of the integration we wanted to show you. Uh, I, have a, I have a question about the job specifically. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, is there going to, going to be any future work um, like deepening the integration with the actual job resources in Kubernetes and um, integrating that with how um, Rundeck does its executions? Uh, what do you have in mind? Have in mind? Um, well, so, so a good example is I'm not, a really, I'm not so much of a good developer, and so I will sometimes cobble together a script ad hoc in Rundeck um, and kind of test it. Um, brute force through Rundex sometimes until I see it working. Um, and so like with the Rundex, or I'm sorry, with the Kubernetes job definitions, um, those are just spinning up containers as opposed to executing ad hoc scripts, kind of like what I get with Rundex right now. Um, is there going to be any kind of integration that would let me do ad hoc scripting through a Kubernetes job on Rundex? Um, so you mean just like you would in a, in a normal Unix host uh, have a script file step uh, that would run inside uh, the pod? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's definitely a, an obvious next step for us. Yeah, um, that, that for sure. And then kind of another, another question along the same kind of job integration um, work that you guys might be doing. Um, you were talking about how in kubectl you have to, uh, if you want to rerun a job, you need to, you know, delete it and create it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, is there going to be any plans in here to kind of abstract that away in Rundeck, kind of how like going back to the ad hoc scripts and executions, how you can just click run again? Um, is there going to be any kind of integration that will kind of same thing for Kubernetes jobs where you punch run again and it in effect does the delete and the, the recreation? Right now, we have a special step called rerun job, but I think uh, maybe what you're suggesting is um, make that implicit. Right. That's kind of what I was. Um, that's kind of what I was wanting to see in this. Is I was I was wondering if you're going to make the Kubernetes jobs kind of a first class citizen inside of Rundeck. Um, and I guess I was wondering if that was going to be. Um, something you guys would be working towards or, or if this was going to be a series of, um, of uh, workflow steps that were specifically targeted towards Kubernetes instead of kind of doing a deeper integration with, with the job resource in Kubernetes. Yeah, well, this is what's great about this office hours that we you know, find out really what these ability needs are. Um, we started kind of at a lower level or you know, kind of just more straight to the metal of Kubernetes, but that's, um, your use case is really what we're aiming for the most, which is you're not, um, you know, a full-time developer and you want to do these kinds of things with basically um, higher level steps that do a lot of the grunt work. So, yeah, I mean, maybe one thing we can follow up with you on is um, an example script that you're using that maybe could get turned into something closer to what you're hoping for. Okay. But you still see that being wrapped in a container and then executed through the Kubernetes job API as opposed to um, making that more of an abstraction in the run deck, run deck layer. Um, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I, I guess I, I need to understand better how that would be represented in run deck as a first class thing. Um, okay. kind of from the run deck architecture standpoint, what does that mean? Um, but and then one, one last question about um, the various versions in Kubernetes. Um, how, do you guys have a plan for how you're going to keep up with all the changes in the YAMLs? Because, I mean, you've got nice abstractions around that, and then, you know, you've got the direct editing of the YAML, but uh, the nice abstractions where, you know, you can point and click and change the container name, you know, and the replica field and that kind of thing. Um, how do you guys 
keeping on top of those Kubernetes version changes? Is that going to come in the form of plugin updates? I think so. And also, you know, part of what I'm interested to know about is what do users prefer? Do they prefer the, the fully encapsulated step that, that lets you avoid, you know, the YAML syntax um, versus maybe some people are so used to that YAML syntax, that's the easiest way for them to define what they want. I think part of that will just play out based on the feedback to the plugins. But for sure, I think from a end user standpoint, I like the fully encapsulated um, style user interface. That may help us avoid some of that YAML syntax change. But um, yeah, as far as the, the YAML syntax versions in the, in the generic um, steps, we'll have to figure out a good way to track that. OK, thank you. Well, to finish, um, now you can see that the, the cluster members was added here in, the, in, my random, in my random cluster. And the nodes disappear here. So I think that we're ready, Alex, with the demo. Yeah, I think that covered the basis pretty well, Luis. Yes. All right, well, Luis, why don't you um, just bring up the GitHub project page, let people know where to go. Okay. You can see it's there under Rundeck Plugins Kubernetes. This is a brand new, you're really seeing a brand new integration here. Um, you can see there's a lot of functionality, but um, the more people try it, the, the better it gets and the better, I, you know, more ideas will come in. Um, so we look forward to uh, all that input. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll put together a page on uh, rundeck.com as well that has a link to this video and this, uh, uh, this plugin uh, repository and maybe some other resources. And we'll make sure to email that link out to everybody who signed up for this. So I know we have a few minutes left. Um, does anyone else have any, any questions either about this or just you know, general rundeck questions or uh, could be problems, could be comments, could be feedback. Um, you know, we got the time, so with, uh, as long as you're on the line, we'd love to hear from you. Hi guys, um, quick one, hopefully. So, uh, so you demonstrated that you're using the the Kubernetes API authentication. Is there support for SSH authentication to I don't know, uh, um, Node Master or something? You're talking for the ad hoc uh, execution? Yeah. I think that would just be a normal node in that sense then. Um, you can choose what the node executor is per node, but I think, um, Luis, is that a, a selector that you could define or a default you could define for node executor in the resource model? Sorry. And you mentioned that um, if you want, for example, change the uh, no executor for the pods, something like that. Yeah. And yes, because you can add in the you have this uh, the full attribute and where you can modify yeah. the node executor, um, something that. Okay. So cool. And use, yeah, for example, SSH, something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's so. That's kind of typical for. Um, how you control the node executor for any node. Right. This is quite similar to the, to the res, uh, Docker resume model that we built. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, that, I'm glad you raised that question about SSH access to the containers because uh, that's another one of those questions we have. Um, we were at uh, KubeCon um, not long ago, and we saw some vendors um, talking about that um, SSH integration. So, um, you know, for Rendeck, that's kind of easy out of the box. But uh, yeah, that's one of those questions of how often is that the case or uh, versus, you know, having used the API like this. So 
Thanks. Any uh, any other questions? Got a little more time here or comments. No. All right. I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks everybody for for joining. As I said, we'll have uh, we'll email email out a link to this to everybody who uh, who signed up. Um, if he's clicked in through the Zoom the Zoom link, um, you can follow us on Twitter. We'll post that page as well, just at Rundeck um, on Twitter. And uh, that's it. Thanks all for joining, and, and uh, hope you can uh, you can join us again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye.